Senator Stone. Good afternoon, Madam Chairwoman and uh, members. It's nice to see you all this morning, this afternoon. Uh, SB 1306 is designed to equalize the playing field by making sure that all parties have skin in the game should they choose to initiate a lawsuit under CEQA. Although CEQA reform is something that is often discussed, we very rarely pass any substantial bills to fix some of its most difficult problems. As a legislative analyst notes in a March 2015 report, CEQA's complicated procedural requirements give development opponents significant opportunities to continue challenging housing projects after local governments have approved them. To provide an example of how this has affected my district, when I was a county supervisor representing the unincorporated area of Menifee, California, the board and I approved their first commercial shopping center that gave them a tax base to become a city, which they later became. A frivolous lawsuit was filed under CEQA by a grocery clerk living in the city of Temecula on behalf of a new organization that never testified at any of the public hearings with a nickname akin to the Concerned Citizens for Environmental Justice for Menifee. Their membership consisted of the plaintiff and his attorney. The county settled the lawsuit on behalf of the developer for $250,000 with de minimis environmental alterations. The developer had already signed leases with the anchor tenants were in certain timelines needed to be kept. This lawsuit was a, simply a mechanism to extract money in lieu of holding up a community supported project. This single lawsuit delayed over a hundred million dollars in construction and hundreds of new jobs. One of the most onerous parts of CEQA is that currently only plaintiffs are able to recoup attorney costs and court costs if they engage in litigation. This means that even if a defendant prevails on the merits of their cases, they have no way to seek restitution other than a countersuit. Today in California, 64% of petitioners that file CEQA lawsuits are either individuals or local associations that have no prior track record of environmental advocacy. This bill will help put a stop to the meritless lawsuits that hold up good projects that benefit our communities. SB 1306 is the first step in the right direction for fixing a broken system. The net effect will increase investment opportunities, including the building of badly needed low to moderate income housing by decreasing frivolous lawsuits which tie up projects for years unless an unreasonable settlement is made. I want you to know I'm a green Republican. I have solar panels on my home. I'm on my third electric car. I've owned two CNG cars. I, like you, want to assure, be sure that we have clean air and clean water. Unfortunately, there are those that use CEQA as a vehicle to enrich themselves at the expense of building the commercial and low to moderate income housing we desperately need in the state of California. My goal of this legislation is not to weaken CEQA, which ensures environmental issues will be addressed on projects. My goal is to stop the anti-business, frivolous lawsuits that can be filled without risk to those filing those lawsuits for the other side's legal fees if their side has no legal merit. Approving this provision will ensure that we see a greater comfort level with those that want to invest in California that are stifled by a lack of certainty with this imbalance of fairness and will generate, I believe, in many more projects that may solve our housing crisis. Thank you, and I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Senator Stone. Witnesses in support. Good afternoon, <laughs> Madam Chair, members, Anthony Sampson with the California Chamber of Commerce. Uh, let me start by, by saying that the Chamber, uh, although it may come as a surprise to some of you, believes that CEQA is an extraordinarily important tool to ensure projects move forward in an environmentally sustainable way. CEQA works when it works as intended. The issue um, that, that I think the Senator is concerned about, rightfully so, and certainly that the Chamber is concerned about, is when it works as it was not intended. And we've seen that over and over again, admittedly, business versus business. We see it union versus business, NIMBY versus business, and one area of misuse that we don't often talk about is lead agency versus lead agency. So what are we going to do to address these issues? Senator Jackson, we worked together on SB 122 to try to address some of those issues in the administrative process. We couldn't quite get there. 
Um, but I think it's well acknowledged that there is a problem out there. And I think that this bill certainly sparks an important discussion um, and carries forward a, a continuing dialogue about misuse of the CEQA process. And this doesn't only hurt the businesses. This hurts the very purpose for which CEQA was originally enacted. It was for environmental protection. And too often we are seeing suits that are based not on environmental protection, but on personal interests um, in a project uh, to either stop it or gain concessions. I will say that notwithstanding the Chamber's support for the um, underlying uh, principles of this bill, I would agree with the committee analysis that the location of it in the Consumer Legal Remedies Act uh, may not be the best location to effectuate uh, the purpose. Um, I am not aware of any CEQA action brought under the Consumer Legal Remedies Act. I've talked about this with the author's office. I've talked about it with the committee staff. Um, so to the, to the extent this bill were to move forward, uh, we would simply encourage uh, a provision within CC, CCP 1021.5, which governs attorney's fees under CEQA or within CEQA itself for that matter. Um, so with that, we very much support the principles uh, within this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Any other witnesses in support of this measure? Any witnesses here in opposition? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair. Members of the committee, Kyle Jones of Sierra Club, California, and also on behalf of CLCV in opposition today. Uh, the effects of the bill by increasing costs of bringing a CEQA action to court uh, potentially would have the effect of, of uh, preventing people from ever bringing cases that would have merit to begin with. Uh, and this could lead to a very negative effect on the environment and prevent uh, the public good from being served. So we urge a no vote today. Thank you. Thank you. Other witnesses in opposition? Thank you. Good afternoon. Nancy Peverini on behalf of the Consumer Attorneys of California. We do oppose loser pay provisions in California law. We think they're bad pub public policy. So we do oppose this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Other witnesses in opposition? For aligning our comments with the consumer attorneys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Other witnesses in opposition? All right. Well, having, uh, as was mentioned by our witness from the chamber, this is an issue that I have been working on, trying to find ways to uh, make the system uh, more expeditious, uh, making it cleaner. And uh, sadly, the chamber has not seen the clarity of my wisdom in this. Uh, but we haven't given up. Uh, but one of the things that I did learn in my research is that there are so few of these cases that go to trial. So it's kind of like um, a whipping boy or a whipping post that really um, is an inaccurate reflection on just how many cases are litigated. So uh, with all due respect to Senator Stone, who I know um, likes to think almost uh, all the uh, the courts are clogged up by frivolous lawsuits, which is one word to, to those in opposition to using the legal system. I, I have to respectfully disagree. And one of the things about CEQA that I don't think people really understand is that it is a, um, it is a, a law that is driven by citizens. There is no, basically, you don't go to the government to redress your concerns, you have to go to court. Now, maybe there's something that can or should be done to the extent that there are these terrible hurdles being uh, created. We do know that there are some CEQA abuses. Uh, some of them are business to business, interestingly enough. Um, and uh, th these are things that uh, the legislation that I brought, I believe, would expedite the process so we can't see the delays because part of the, the goal frequently is to delay and delay and delay, which we, I think we've seen a lot of today. It's sort of been a theme in uh, um, some of the discussions and leg legislation. So um, I have a concern that this, by requiring the loser uh, to pay, um, in this litigation uh, does in fact shift um, or you lose to pay, I think was the, meant, was the phrase that's mentioned, really is contrary to the policies that we do uh, try to um, promote uh, with this litigation. And we don't want to chill public participation in asserting important public rights. And so while I respect your concerns and agree in 
measure that there are abuses like anything. There's always somebody who's gonna take advantage. I think the abuses in, under CEQA are very limited, and I don't think that by killing public participation, we achieve the goals that we want. You're more than happy to respond to that. It really is more a statement, but I'll put a question mark on it so it becomes a question to you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, I would say that I'm not trying to stifle a, a citizen's right to, to challenge a, a project. As you know, there are lengthy public hearings that we have where citizens can come forward and uh, make their claims uh, about their concerns about the environmental impacts that a potential project has. But I only, I only cite one example of many uh, throughout my 22 years in local government where people have used CEQA uh, not for environmental justice but to uh, be an MB, they don't want a project, um, to um, um, extort, I'm sorry to say. There are some attorneys out there that try to extort money, and there are many examples of that, and uh, in, in certainly in my county and throughout the state of California. And, uh, and my goal, uh, and I, I'd be very happy to work with the committee, and, and including the chairwoman, I want to come up with something. Uh, there's no question that we have to have some reforms of CECO if we want to be a business-friendly state. And frankly, businesses won't look here today because they see this, uh, this monstrosity of an act that creates such an opening for people to stop, stop projects. I mean, I, I would have loved to have had the Tesla battery factory here in California and not see it go to Nevada. But I believe that one of the reasons why Mr. Musk chose to go there is because of the uncertainty the CEQA uh, would have inferred on, on a project here in the state of California. So. Uh, I want us to just be the golden state that uh, is uh, attracting businesses here that want to follow the rules that are going to have to be environmentally sensitive to our state. And I think we'll all agree that we need some reforms of CEQA to make us more business friendly. I would be very happy to continue this bill to work with you, Madam Chairwoman, or anyone on the committee to come up with something to show that it is something that needs to be repaired. We can put our collective minds together like you and I just did on the uh, pharmaceutical uh, issues. I'm open-minded. We have a problem. Um, I'm not coming here with what I think may be the, the magic bullet to solve it, but I know we can do better in reforming some of the provisions of CEQA to make sure we have businesses that feel confident that they can come in the state of California. And, and I will be happy be to uh, show you SB 122, which I think accomplishes that without, uh, without undermining the public's right. At the end of the day, we have a process. If the process is not uh, agreed upon, ultimately there is only one avenue, and that is litigation. So um, while we certainly want to be friendly to business, we also have a responsibility to protect our environment, which is what CEQA is all about. Uh, and um, uh, I, uh, as I say, uh, take a look at one SB 122, which I think is a, uh, is a more viable solution uh, to this problem. It expedites the whole proceeding. It makes it simpler. Uh, we get to the heart of the matter more quickly, and uh, it avoids the kinds of games that are played. And contrary to the notion that we see lots of uh, frivolous lawsuits, and I beg to differ with the notion that there are so many attorneys out there who are attempting to blackmail others. In fact, that uh, it's probably the litigants who may see an opportunity, but I do believe that there are ways, better ways, rather than undermining this whole process. So I do appreciate your, your effort, and I'd invite you to take a look at SB 122. It's still sitting on the assembly floor. It's not dead yet. Any other questions? Senator Hertzberg. Yeah, you, you know, there are a lot of other democracies that have a very established rule of law that have prevailing party provisions. The UK has done it brilliantly. And it does, in real world, have a very significant impact as litigants try to leverage versus um, have to be very serious about making a decision to go and seek relief in the judicial branch. It's worked. I do think, as the chair mentioned, that you have this chilling effect on public rights, that what you have here, Senator, is a unique circumstance. Because through the series of laws that started, I think, with Earl Warren for public laws in 1947 and was further advanced by Ronald Reagan, actually, uh, in terms of the, the, the California Environmental Quality Act, is this delicate balance. 
And you are, you are on the money because it is a business to business. It is, let's use this, it's less expensive for a leverage tool. I don't think you see a lot of these cases litigated because the purpose isn't to litigate, it's to leverage. And I think that's, that's an honest assessment. And there's also a whole industrial a political complex out there of people who make a ton of money on this process that write EIRs that are this big that no one ever reads. And, and it, it, it just, we're not telling the truth because at the end of the day, the truth is about the environment. That's its purpose. So I, I just wanted to make this statement because I, I do am very, very sensitive to the larger issue of what, we're, what you're trying to accomplish. I do think that there are instances where a prevailing party is a, a thoughtful approach. I don't think that's in this instance because so often the underlying political purpose has started many years ago was to give the individual a voice for the environment because it was so important. And because it's so easy for people with great power to squash the voice of people who could be fearful that their lives could be destroyed if they want to speak out against something that they think they're wrong, that, that it's wrong that's happening in society, that balance and that risk is too great. That being said, you have touched a problem. It is a nerve. It is hard. We got to fix it. And it's important. Thank you, sir, for doing this. Thank you, Senator. For your Thank you. Uh, S Senator Morlock. Just a good editorial in the LA Times last week on CEQA abuse, and uh, in fact, uh, with uh, regards to a train yard nearby the ports of LA and Long Beach, but uh, BNSF was sued, and the case has been going on for almost 11 years. And, and in the meantime, all these trucks are going up to 710, 12 miles to get to the next train yard. So it's just it's like, hey, we look at all the diesel that's been burned for the last decade. Uh, so. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I, uh, I agree with the author and I'd like to move the bill. Any other questions or debate? Seeing and hearing none, Senator Stone, would you like to close? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Briefly. And I appreciate uh, all the comments and um, I, I knew this was gonna be a, a difficult uh, bill, um, but there is a, there is a problem. My, my goals are, is not to stifle anyone's individual rights to, to challenge a project without the fear of of going bankrupt. Um, I, I wish there was a way that we could protect those rights of individuals and have an expedited hearing uh, so that a project could move forward or, uh, or not move forward. Uh, but the way that the, the laws are set up at this point in time, uh, we are still gonna continue to see a stifling of investment uh, in the state of California. We are still gonna have uh, municipalities, including the county of Riverside, paying out hundreds of thousands, in some cases, maybe millions of dollars, uh, to get out from underneath uh, a, a, a CEQA claim. Uh, and that's why many of them don't go to court, is because they successfully extract money. And, and many times it comes from the public sector, uh, which means the taxpayers are, are, are foot in the bill uh, for, for issues that, in some cases, are justified. Uh, in the city of Temecula, we had a quarry that was uh, being shoved down our throats uh, by a big construction company that would have had significant environmental impacts on our city and our county. And the city of Temecula appropriately, the Pechanga tribe appropriately, filed a lawsuit, a CEQA lawsuit, and it was extremely justified uh, because there were so many environmental issues that uh, well, were not taken uh, into consideration or mitigated during the, uh, the, the CEQA hearings and the environmental impact report. So uh, again, I'm not here to weaken CEQA. Uh, I would just like to find a mechanism to make sure that when those lawsuits are filed, that there really is a true environmental impact where we're trying to protect people and, and not uh, give basically uh, an open checkbook to some frivolous attorneys. I'm just saying all attorneys are filing frivolous lawsuits. There is a small percentage uh, that are out there. Uh, we know their names in Riverside County is... Uh, and, and if I may, I have to interrupt you. Yeah. Lawyers don't so file lawsuits without clients. Right. So let's not go after the legal profession, particularly since I'm a lawyer and I'm sitting here as the chair of this committee. I, I, I'm at the point now where I'm finding my, that a personally offensive my statement. My apologies as a non All right. And if you would just wrap it up, please. Thank you, Senator. Anyway. Um, uh, like I said in, in, in the one example I had, one plaintiff, one attorney uh, to held up a, a large shopping center. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for your consideration. Uh, I respectfully ask for your I vote. And uh, if, it's, if it doesn't pass, I'd be delighted to work with any of you because this is a problem that's not gonna go away if we want to 
see a prosperous California. Thank you, Senator. And as I had mentioned, I appreciate that you're looking at the uh, problem, but I don't believe this is the answer. So with that, we have a motion by Senator Morlock, uh, which is do pass to Senate rules. Please call uh, the roll. Jackson? No. Jackson, no. Morlock? Aye. Morlock, aye. Anderson? Aye. Anderson, aye. Hertzberg? Leno? No. Leno, no. Monning? No. Monning, no. Wykowski? No. Wykowski, no. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Senator. The two, two, three, um, excuse me, two ayes, four noes, uh, that measure fails. Madam Chair, can I move for reconsideration? I was just going to ask the Senator if he'd like reconsideration, but he's left, so we will go ahead and, uh, on his behalf, grant reconsideration. Thank you. All right. Uh, yes. Without objection, of course. Thank you very much. All right, we have uh, Senator Mendoza, file item 11, SB 1342. Good afternoon, Senator. Hello, Hello Madam Chair, members. I'm here to uh, present SB 1342, a bill that would ensure greater justice for California's workers and the recovery of lost wages. This bill will offer much needed clarity for city and county legislative bodies looking to investigate wage theft. While the state of California and several cities and counties have raised the, their minimum wage, millions of workers are, de are denied billions of dollars in earned wages through wage theft practices which prevent payment for all hours worked. Many of these employees are women and minorities and while our state authorities are making strides in resolving these problems, they and our workers need more help. That is why SB 1342 comes that this is where SB 32 comes in. Many county and city governments are unaware or are unclear what, that under existing law, they can delegate the subpoena authority of the legislative bodies to officials within their governments for the purpose of investigating claims of waste theft in their jurisdictions. County and city governments are subsequently able to develop their own individual mechanisms under this existing authority to combat waste theft. This bill simply gives locals clarity on the issue should they choose to implement wage theft prevention programs in their localities. Additionally, SB 1342 provisions have been found to be declaratory of existing law by an oral and forthcoming written opinion from legislative council. We will simply be making local governments aware of their ability to combat the disgraceful practice of wage theft and offering California's workers the protections and ec economic security that they deserve. Uh, with that, Madam Chair, I respectfully ask for everyone and do have some witnesses in support. Very good. Good afternoon. Please uh, proceed. Give us your name and your testimony. You have two minutes each. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, <clears throat> members of the committee. My name is Brian Steger. I'm the director for the Los Angeles County Department of Consumer and Business Affairs. Over the past year, the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors has taken a number of steps to lift people out of poverty and address the problem of homelessness. One such action was to raise the minimum wage in the unincorporated areas of Los Angeles County. On September 15, 2015, the board passed the minimum wage ordinance that comes into effect on July 1, 2016. The ordinance requires employers with more than 26 employees to raise uh, the minimum wage up to 10.50 an hour, which will then increase annually for the next four years, um, ultimately being at $15 an hour. For businesses that have less than, than 25, for businesses that have 25 or fewer uh, employees, uh, that action is, is deferred for one year. In addition to passing the minimum wage ordinance, the board took the necessary steps to ensure that employers actually pay the minimum wage to workers as required by the ordinance. And this is important because wage theft is widespread in Los Angeles County and one of the most common wage theft violations is failure to pay the minimum wage. In the months leading up to the minimum wage uh, adoption, we heard testimony from a number of wage theft victims during public hearings and throughout, all the way throughout uh, Los Angeles County. As the Senator said, we learned that victims of wage theft are disproportionately women and people of color. Senate Bill 1342 essentially helps the Department of Consumer and Business Affairs investigate complaints of wage theft, and more importantly, it helps us recover wages that are owed to workers to help um, them remain out of poverty and potentially uh, lose their homes. And I would specifically ask for your aye vote. Thank you. Madam Chairman and members, Bill DePlissy representing the County of Los Angeles. <clears throat> Here in support, first of all, I wanted to thank the uh, committee staff uh, for working out some 
rough edges on the bill and just uh, would ask for your, your support. The bill's in the condition now that it's gonna move the rest of the way. I believe it's not, there's no intention to amend the bill. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other witnesses in support? Are there any witnesses in opposition? Seeing and hearing none, any questions, comments from the motion by Senator Hertzberg? Thank you, Senator Mendoza, for bringing this and for working with us to create, I think, a, a, a pretty good product to, to represent a real problem. Although I know there are many employers who do a good job and are fair to their employees, there are a few bad apples that are really creating a problem, and I think this will help us address it. So with that, there is a motion uh, due pass to the Senate floor. Please call the roll. Jackson? Aye. Jackson, aye. Morlock? Anderson? Aye. Anderson, aye. Hertzberg? Aye. Hertzberg, aye. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Monning? Aye. Monning, aye. Wykowski? Aye. Wykowski, aye. Six to zero. That bill is out. Thank you, Senator Mendoza. And we have one final bill uh, before...